What's up, everybody? Uh, I did want to come back. You guys told me you'd send me if you found more stuff on the verdict reaction of the Nikolai Mew Apple River stabbing case. And that's what we've got here today. We're going to listen to the victim's family react and the prosecutors react, see what the prosecutors felt, whether they were happy with the verdict or not, why they think it came back as reckless and not intentional, what the reasoning for the jury is um, in their mind and how important this was to their office. So we're going to get a lot of answers as the fallout continues from these guilty verdicts across the board of reckless um, homicide and um, violent actions by Nikolai Mew as decided by the jury that they were reckless, violent actions ending in death and harm to people. So we're going to continue reacting to it and watching what people have to say about it. So we are going to jump right in to those reactions. First up, we have here Isaac Schumann's family speaking on whether or not they feel like they got justice today. Um, I just want to thank all our supporters, our family, law enforcement, people we have that, that have supported us that we don't even know throughout the country, state of Minnesota, wherever. Um, it's been 21 months we've been waiting for justice for Isaac Michael Schumann. And we got it today. So I just want to tell everybody I appreciate all your love and support. And uh, Justice for Isaac. Yes, justice for and Isaac. The other victims. Yes. So thank you very much. And that was it. Um, and, and frankly, from my perspective, uh, I saw what I needed to see that his parents felt like it was justice. Um, it seems like they were satisfied with the verdict. I've seen that go both ways when it's a lesser included charge. I think it was explained to them appropriately that this was a win for them. And, you know, obviously what they believe and feel happened in this case, losing their son at such a young age, I wouldn't wish that on anybody. It's horrible. I feel horrible for them. Uh, but they feel like they got justice today with this verdict. So that's their reaction. And now we're going to hear from the prosecutors on the case. We're relieved with the verdict. The jury determined beyond a reasonable doubt that this was not self-defense. I'm relieved for Isaac's family, for the other victims. It's, uh, I think it, as, as anyone can see in this case, it's absolutely tragic on many levels. But we're relieved with the jury's verdict. I can answer some brief questions. I'm not going to speak for too long. So they obviously think of it as a win. No doubt. No surprise. Um, they feel like they absolutely won on the self-defense stuff. That was the main defense. The jury found it was not self-defense. Uh, and they're going to talk about the lesser included, I'm sure, in this interview. No, it's, it's part of the criminal justice process. The jury gets to decide which charge fits the facts. So they determined that it was reckless. Um, it doesn't mean they, some didn't think it was intentional, but they couldn't agree on intentional. They agreed unanimously that it was reckless, uh, that he showed utter disregard for human life and his actions. So he says it's not that unusual for them to have lesser included charges. I agree. I've said that. Um, they could have started with them and they didn't, but he also throws in there that some of the jurors probably thought it was intentional. He's probably not wrong there either. Um, so making some comments again, when you win, you know, the, the victors write history, right? So, um, you get to make some of these calls knowing that you won and the jury at least agreed with you that this conduct was illegal and not self-defense. It was important for both sides, you know, defense relied on the video, uh, but the video doesn't tell the whole story. If you just watch the video, uh, you don't get the full picture of this case. The jury sat through seven days of evidence. Um, a key, a key point in this case was. So it almost sounds like he admits the the video is better for the defense. And if you just watch the video, you might think it's self defense. There's a little tinge of that in what he says, but what does he point out was very important about what the jury found out with the full context. Because guess what? It's something we talked about on our channel. 
key, a key point in this case was Nikolai's own actions. You know, after he stabbed all these people, he walked away. He ditched his knife, didn't tell his group anything. Um, then he tried to get away. He pretended like he wasn't involved and then gave a, a story uh, to Lieutenant Hart that they pulled knives on him, and I think that's important for the jury um, to know that, to see what he thought, what was in his mind at the time of these, and whether it was actually self-defense. What do you think the evidence was? So his actions afterwards, his lies, his own statements, he even believes in a seven-minute interview, the first kind of thing he points out, yeah, there was the video, but context help, what is that context? Exactly what we thought as well. So he's, his read on the jury was as similar as ours that Nikolai Mew's post-altercation actions and words were very damning. Can't really hear the questions. Our, our position was if you're, if he's truly afraid, why not just hold up the knife and people are going to back up like Owen did. Owen ran away once he saw the knife. So that was our thought on it. If, Isaac's family's here. We spoke with them. They're extremely re relieved and uh, feel that Isaac got justice. Yeah, that was always the plan to ask for lesser included charges. That's, it's pretty, it's really common in a homicide case because ultimately the- This is where he said it was common. I think I mentioned before he said it was common, but this is where he said it was common. Jury is the one seeking the truth. Uh, it's up to them to reach the verdict. The jury is the one seeking the truth? You're supposed to be seeking the truth to us. That was weird. And they might not think it's intentional or they may, or they may think it's reckless. So here they, they didn't, they found the big difference between reckless and intentional um, is whether he was trying to kill them or not. And then the difference between, so this was the third lesser included. They, and the big difference between the two recklesses is whether it was utter disregard and it, for human life, and they concluded it was with their verdict. Do you consider it self-defense? Yes, that if, if they believed it was self-defense, it would, would have been not guilty across the board. Now, you talk about how big this case is for you and your office, and there's clearly a lot, it seems like everybody's in the hallway right now. Yeah, it's headed. I mean, obviously this isn't typical here. We do trials all the time. There's usually not that much, um, nearly as much investment, I guess, in a lot of what we do. Um, so it had a major impact on the community. I think what he's looking more on is interest, but. I think a big part of it is how public it was, the incident, the number mm -hmm. of victims. Um, it happens that the victims aren't residents of here, neither was Nikolai, uh, but it, the Apple River is very well known in the area. It's a, as anyone who was there for jury selection, I think about half the jury panel had been to the Apple River. So I think it kind of hits close to home for a lot of people. Because I think Isaac and the other victims got justice. I, I, I was very hopeful for a conviction, uh, but you just never know what a jury is going to do. Uh, usually, I think they have a pretty good idea. I've been surprised before in jury trials. Um, but I think the when we looked at all the evidence, it seemed clear to us that he was angry, that he wasn't afraid. So we were confident the jury would see that also, but you just never know. It's a good answer and a true answer because no matter how confident you are, you never know what a jury's going to do. It's always a risk to put it before a jury, but they did seem confident. And, you know, at the end of the day, they won. Um, so their theories won the day. Their arguments, the facts on their side won the day. Yes. I think it showed his consciousness of guilt that he knew he wasn't. They asked about the video of the interrogation. 
And he starts with consciousness of guilt. And again, these were the big pieces of evidence that we thought were best for the state, worse for the defense. And he feared for his life, so he had to embellish the story and say that other people pulled knives on him and he took away their knife in order to justify it. So Nikolai... It's like even he... Something I would have argued in closing too is that's self-defense. If you guys... If this jury wants to know what self-defense look like, looks like, that's it. If they would have had two knives that they pulled on him and he was unarmed, then you respond in self-defense like this. But that's not at all what happened here. He was the one with the knife. They responded in self-defense. His story is self-defense, but it's not the true story. That That's a good argument. I knew when he gave that interview that he was not justified. The, the jury instructions define self-defense. The jury is obligated to follow that. Um, in this case, they concluded, again, beyond a reasonable doubt, it wasn't. The, and the video, I think another big part of this case was the other video from Larry Ann Davis, who I think if anyone saw his testimony, we didn't call him for his eyewitness count, but for that other video he took, which shows Nikolai walking opposite of the direction of his group walking, approaching Dante and stabbing him after Ariel was already there. So I think that was also a key piece that, you know, he wasn't still, he wasn't afraid. He was, he was angry. And Carl, when is sentencing and what are the possibilities of his release? I don't know when sentencing is yet. It hasn't been scheduled. Um, if I did my quick math right, I think he's facing 97 years. Could be, it could be consecutive. Would it need to be consecutive? Yes. It's up. It's it's all. It's ultimately up to the judge. Obviously, the sentence. Um, so Sixty years on the top count, potentially more. Well, so we have. It's forty in and twenty out on the top count. Plus we were right about that in our earlier video. We said sixty, forty plus twenty. It's five years for the using a dangerous weapon. So it's not life for the dangerous weapon. It's plus five years for the dangerous weapon. So that's forty-five plus twenty. And I think when he said ninety-seven, that's going to be another fifty years on top of the 45 years. So it's, it's his whole, it's going to end up being his whole life. Uh, the other counts are seven and a half years plus five of initial confinement prison time. So, so does the judge have discretion or is there a guideline range or anything like that? There's no guidelines. It's strictly up to the judge's discretion. So, all right. Thank you. Thank you. So, yeah. I definitely think when we're talking about sentences, whenever the sentencing is, it's going to be for the rest of Nikolai Mew's life, um, which again, makes this a huge verdict, very important. Um, if it's the right verdict, good justice has been served. If not, it's a travesty because it's another person's life. So the debate will continue on you know how people saw this case, but um, legally speaking at this point, he is guilty. The jury did not find that he acted in self-defense. Um, and this verdict is going to continue to have a ripple effect and we're going to continue to follow it. Um, and if any juror interviews come out or things like that, we'll continue to react to it, bring it to you guys for more discussion, but thanks for joining me today. That's all I've got till next time. I'm out of here. Oh, don't forget to hit that like button. Thanks for watching another episode of the lawyer. You know, if you enjoyed the episode, please hit the thumbs up and share with your friends who may be interested here on YouTube. And don't forget to subscribe. You can also follow us on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, and TikTok. And don't forget to check out the Lawyer You Know podcast with new seasons dropping every quarter. If you have a case you want to talk to us about, if it's a personal injury case, wrongful death, catastrophic injury, car accident, or slip and fall case, please email us at lawyeryouknow at gmail.com. And of course, all these links I just mentioned are included in the description below on this episode and every episode. So until next time, this is Peter Tregos, the lawyer you know.